Otherwise, I thought we had a 10. So we will wait with you for Li Jing's score. Look how casual he is. He's just walking off like, yeah, just another P bar routine. He was the same way after the vault. He had a very good score on the vault, too. There's the Healy twirl right through to a front one and three quarter, lands on his upper arms, and without even breaking rhythm, continues the exercise with an underbar glide kick. You know, we are seeing some very high scores here tonight in the men's competition, and I find it interesting because you've said on numerous occasions after the Olympic Games, they really sort of changed the rules a little bit and made it more difficult to score high. They do make it more difficult, especially in the event finals where the judges are requiring higher level of difficulty. In the team competition, as we're seeing here, the difficulty requirements aren't as stringent as we'll see in the finals. But needless to say, the gymnasts are packing their routines with difficulty because that's the best way to get the attention of the judges is with a lot of big tricks. Li Jing, a 9-8. Meanwhile, Jorg Barron on the vault a little bit earlier. There's a handspring front with a half in a laid out position. Small step on the landing. Very powerful vault. And a 9-8 for Jörg Baron of East Germany. East Germany's doing rather well here early in this competition. Meanwhile, Silvio Kroll. This is a great ball. Handspring front with a half in the laid out position. You can see why he was a former world and Olympic champion in the vault competition. It's very difficult to maintain good, clean form. And what power and height and of course, the judges are impressed by his height as well as his distance from the horse. And because of the terrific vault competition, they have now moved ahead of the Chinese. 9-9, nine, nine, the score for Silvio Kroll. So the East Germans having a very good vault discipline and in fact, a very good, very good team competition so far here. They sit right now in second place behind the Soviet Union and they have put a little distance between themselves and China their closest competitors. Meanwhile, Wang Chongjing on parallel bars. He opened with a peach to a handstand. Oh, there's a great move. It's a giant to a double back within the bars. Once again, showing terrific underbar work that the judges are stressing. There's another giant swing, this time with a half turn. Boy, he really keeps good body line throughout those. Oh, a little trouble on that back toss. That giant threw to the double back within the parallel bars with a great original skill and certainly will fill the requirements of originality that the judges are looking for as well. A little bit of a step back for Wang Cheng Cheng. He wind up with a 9.75 on parallel bars for his team. Well, the Soviet Union continues to lead the competition here and they are virtually assured of a team victory. East Germany is in second place ahead of China right now. How did the United States do? Well, we mentioned that they competed earlier in the previous rotation and they were locked in a battle with Bulgaria and with Italy. Didn't turn out quite so well for the United States, but when you go back and take a look at some of the individual performances, you have to say it was quite good. Well, they had some wild routines on high bar. Conrad Vorsanger used a terrific move there, a toe on to a front recatch but had a little problem with his grip. And then Kevin Davis came up, and the same thing. He did a combination of release elements and had a problem there as well. 9-2 for Vorsanger, 9-3 for Davis. That did cost the United States. But then Tim Ryan came up and really nailed a terrific dismount there. That's a full twisting, laid out double back. And there are some of the members of the women's team. Randy Johnson, who we will be seeing on a later broadcast. Meanwhile, Lance Ringnall on a high bar. Lance really finished things off well for the U.S. team. His routine is always packed with difficulty. He uses a one-arm giant swing there. But here comes the big part. Three release moves in a row. Reverse hect, reverse hect, Ginger. Perfect form, excellent rhythm. Lance then continued through with a jam to inverted giant swings, hop full pirouette. And his dismount was a double twisting, double layout, and only one little step. So on the high bar for the men, a little bit of good, a little bit of not so good. But this was a lot of the good. 9-8 for Lance Ringall, Ringall to the cheers of some of his teammates. 
Meanwhile, in the competition here, Soviet Union having things its own way. East Germany is second ahead of China. Japan sits in fourth place ahead of Hungary. More to come from Stuttgart, the World Championships, after this. Just a moment ago, came off the bar and landed. It's really hard to tell it. I don't know if we'll be able to tell even from this replay. But in any case, it looks like a dislocated elbow, a broken arm. I don't know. I hate to really judge exactly what happened. Well, he was doing a one-armed ginger right there. And probably a good thing we actually couldn't see when he made contact with the floor because um, he landed heavy on his right arm, of course. And uh, at that point, you're falling from about 12 feet in the air. So if you don't land just right, um, you can do some, some damage, no question. Being tended to and in considerable pain. And certainly Wang... Chang Cheng will not be available to the Chinese team for the remainder of this competition. What that means in terms of the team is that they will just have to go with the five competitors that they have left. And all scores count. They can't drop a weak score. Very painful injury. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the team standings as they are right now. The Soviet Union continues to lead with East Germany in second place, China in third place, but we'll see what this injury to Wang Chang Sheng does to affect their team performance than Japan, Hungary, and Romania. And right now the battle seems to be between East Germany and China. Meanwhile, Li Ge. Right, Li Ge. Does two terrific release moves, a reverse heck with his legs together, and then he continued through it to a ginger. It's a very powerful routine. His aggressive style, very quick with his giant swings. Here's the dismount. A very pretty laid out double back. Excellent performance by Li Ge of China. A few minutes ago, Valery Belenki of the Soviet Union, a 9 9 on the vault. Vitaly Marinich, a 9 8 on the vault. And Vladimir Novikov, a 9 7 on the vault. As we move to the parallel bars and the East German team and this is Andreas Becker. <laughs> Becker having a very good competition here. 9-9 on the pommel horse, 9-8 on the rings, 9-7 on the vault. And once again he's showing very exciting underbar work. Four moves in a row, all giant swing or peach elements. All of those of course Underbar elements. There's a Diamidoff with an extra quarter turn to a glide on the side. Great exercise so far. I will tell you, the Geh on high bar. <laughs> Perfect pike double back dismount for Becker. Adding to his other events today, he's having a really terrific all around competition and certainly doing a lot for the East German team. Back to the high bar and Ma Zheng. He opens with a stalder. Here comes the Gaylord in the pike position, right up to a front stalder. Of course, that move was invented by Mitch Gaylord. Mitch did it tucked. He just did it in the pike position. There's a Delchev, invented by Bulgarian Delchev. His routine is packed with tricks named after other guys. <laughs> Maybe he's tried to invent his own trick. So there's something about a trick called a ma that doesn't have a ring to it. <laughs> oh, ma! <laughs> double twisting, double dismount. Boy, that routine is great. Excellent the Chinese routine. certainly needed that after the injury to Wang Chong Chang. We incidentally just left the facilities being tended to, and we will try to get you a report, although it is difficult to get some information. Here is a look right now at Wang Chong Chang, and he is in some pain, needless to say. Here's the replay of the Gaylord in the pike position. It's a front one and three quarter over the bar. He caught it perfectly. And we jump now, and I mean jump being the key word there, to Sylvia Kroll. Kroll, I beg your pardon. Kroll has a very nice style on the parallel bars. He's always completely extended. Stutz Diamidoff, back toss, right to the top, and a tuck double back. East Germans continuing to pour it on on the parallel bar. Good 
Look here at Hans Martin Schleier Halle. Let's take another look at Cole's dismount on key bars. From the very nice extended handstand position, there's a back toss right to the top. He continues through in a tuck double back. No problem. So the East Germans having a very fine competition here as they came off the compulsories in third place but have done extremely well. And right now they sit in second place. So when we come back, we'll bring you up to date on exactly what's happening. We'll let you know what Silvio Kroll did on parallel bars and still an awful lot more competition to go here. These are the finals in the team competition at the World Championships. We're in Stuttgart and we'll be back. Johnson, these are the World Championships. We're watching the team competition. Before we went away to commercial, we saw Silvio Kroll on parallel bars. His score, 9-8. East Germans doing very, very well. East Germans scored much higher so far on the parallel bars than the Chinese on the high bar. So we're flip-flopping back and forth between these two teams. And remember, Wang Shangsheng of China has left with an injury. It appears to be to his arm or his elbow. We don't really know which, but we do know that he will not be back in the competition. So they will have to make do with just the five competitors that they have on the floor right now. Back to the parallel bars, Sven Tippelt, who was also having an excellent competition. And Sven has one of the most unique parallel bar routines in the world. I'm glad we're having an opportunity to see it here because he opens with a peach handstand, giant full turn, giant half turn out to the end. Works his way back into the middle with an underbar swing through to a Tukachev. Very quick Healy spins. Taking a long time in this handstand, setting up that Stutz. Now watch, he'll work his way back out to the end and then dismount with a double front. A really original routine. He worked from one end all the way to the other end. Sven Tippel of East Germany. Happy guy. Speaking of happy guys, we were watching Igor Kordovchinsky of the Soviet Union. We saw him in floor. We saw him on a pommel horse. We talked about the fact that Kroll and Tippel have had very good competitions here as we take another look at a portion of Tippel's routine on the parallel bars. But let me tell you, Kordovchinsky just had a 9-9 in vault. That to go with a 9-8-5 in floor and a 9-9-5 on pommel horse. And his low point was on rings at 9-7-5. Not bad for a world championship. Not bad and certainly uh, certainly proves the fact that he, he deserved his uh, championship this year in the European Championships over some of the top competitors in the world. And one of them you're seeing right now, Sven Tippelt, little step forward, still a 9-9 for Tippelt on that particular event. As to the Americans, and we have just a moment here, let's talk about the Americans as we will take a look at what they did in the ball competition. But one thing I think it's worth mentioning, and that is the fact that the Americans seem to be do everything, seem to be doing everything right, but the three of us were talking a little bit earlier, and I think it's worthy of note the fact that they have to do perhaps a little bit more. Well, I think the U.S. team effort has been very impressive. They've been very solid. The routines look good. They're very clean. As you can see here, Tim Ryan was a little short on that vault, but the U.S. team is trying to compete with the best in terms of doing maximum level difficulty. But one thing that the Soviets and the Chinese and the East Germans do is they blow you away with routines that are just packed with difficulty. And the U.S. team, although it's very clean, isn't doing the routines that are so packed with difficulty that are just going to knock the judges out of their chairs. Conrad Worsanger, a very good vault. And the average for the United States, 9.53 in the vault. Now, when you start to compare that with what the Soviet Union has been doing, well, the Soviet Union consistently 9.7, 9.75, 9 9.8 from every one of their competitors. In fact, you might say from every one of their competitors about 10 deep. And there are only, of course, six in the competition here. Standings right now, Soviet Union. They're going to win it, no question about that. East Germany is second ahead of China. And then it is Japan, Hungary, and Romania. A lot more to come in the World Championships. It's going to start, and we'll be back right after this. Fresh food, ice tea. Gymnastics athletes were honored, and spectators were treated to colorful opening ceremonies. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 25th World Gymnastics Championships, 1989. Rolling in the Parade of Nations were characters from the Broadway musical hit, Starlight Express. Over 400 athletes from 48 countries were saluted, all eagerly awaiting their chance in the spotlight. But first, it was a time for native song and dance from our global neighbors. Russian folk singers told a ringing tale of health and prosperity. Elegant Japanese women danced in striking costumes, 
conveying a culture that is still alive today. And the fire of a Mexican fiesta had the audience clapping along. But it was the involvement of hundreds of West Germans who stole the show. Representing gymnastics clubs throughout the country, the stage slowly came alive with dancers, gymnasts, and those who exercised for the fit of it.